There we go. He could take me on a sleigh ride. He turned me everywhere. Come on, man. Uh, got it. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing, and today I want to talk to you about corks. Now, I have recently got a lot of questions asking me about corks. How do you select them? How do you fish them? What do you put on them? And I know it's a lot of people feel uneasy or it's a new area or new style they haven't fished yet. Typically, you do use cores when you are throwing live bait. So to put an artificial on there is, is something different for a lot of people. Now, it was for me up to about maybe about a year and a half, two years ago. I had my friend Mike from Texas Fishing Force. He started showing me how to throw a cork and showing me how to rig them. And it really helped me blossom when it comes to using the Corex and let me tell you from the beginning from the minute I put one on I loved it I just want to pass some of my experience of using Corex and fishing with Corex on you Corex typically are tackle that you use for live bait and there's a lot of good there's a lot of good Corex out there on the market you know one of the good Corex that I like to use for live bait is this Coastal Corex you know but what you see on the Coastal Corex is kind of what you see on most live bait Corex they use the wire or they use uh, the fishing line, which is going to give that shrimp or that live bait freedom to move, like on this woody shrimp and this coastal cork. So it gives them, the, gives them the freedom to move. I'm not saying you can't use these style of corks, these style of corks would artificial, but this isn't something that I would recommend. All right, so there's all type of corks on the market to use for artificial. Typically, what I try to look at and pay attention to when I am trying to select a cork for me is making sure I pick the cork for the right job. What's going on that day? What is going on in the water? Now, if you have a calm, flat day and there's not a lot of fish activity, then sometimes throwing that cork with the larger beads will, will scare them. It will, it will make them run away. You'll scare the fish off. You'll scare the bait, which the bait a lot of times scares the fish. So using the large beads on that day probably isn't the smart thing to do. You want to go with something to make like smaller beads. But, you know, you can't go wrong either way when you're throwing a cork. Now, there's a lot of different corks on the market. I, I've used Four Horsemen Cork for years. They make great sound. They get a great reaction bite. Lately, I've been using a lot of woodies, woodies and little woody corks. Again, these are they're both great great corks and when you're looking at using a cork for artificial you want to get that hard wire you don't want to have some of those soft wire corks like you see here the this is like I said earlier this is more for live bait doesn't mean that you can't use them for artificial but you definitely want that with hard wire it's gonna give you a lot better pop when you are out there working your cork now why use a cork Right? Why do you, why do some people throw corks? Now, to me, a cork is a quick way to see if there's any fish in the area. Typically, I'm looking for reds when I'm using a cork. Um, I have caught a couple of a couple of flounder on on the cork using a cork, but typically I'm looking for reds and I'm blind casting. Now, that pop on the surface, that rattle that you hear is going to attract those reds in to investigate you know to me it's kind of like ringing that dinner bell i'm blind casting i'm casting around in the area trying to see if there's any fish in the area any reds in the area that want to pounce on the bait or just check out and see what that noise and that sound and that vibration is so how do i tie my corks right so let's look at the corks so you have some beads on top you have the cork itself you have a bead on bottom and then you have your weight you tie you tie your main line from your reel to the top and then on the bottom here is where you put your leader line now when you are looking at leader line I would suggest you use about a 20 to 30 pound leader line I bought some of this I picked up some of this down south lure leader line this fluorocarbon leader line from down south 30 pound you know it's worked great so far I've caught a few fish haven't really tested it out on some really big reds yet but the fish that I have caught it, it holds a knot well, so I, I'm, 
I'm really leaning towards this leader line. I'm really liking this leader line. But your Zuri also makes a, also makes a great leader line. This is, I think, yeah, this is a 30 pound, and then here's their 20 pound. But I always go 20 or 30 pound. Sometimes you can go a little heavier if you want. If you want to go around 50 pounds, it's kind of pushing it for me. I typically don't go that high, but I know a lot of guys do, especially if you are fishing like some of the some of the areas around oyster reefs. If you're fishing like some areas around the jetties, you might want to use a larger leader, a larger, a thicker, stronger leader line for the simple fact if you might get nicked or, or something of that effect. But typically, 20 or 30 is what I go with. Now I like I like new loop knots. Not everybody likes a loop knot. They like any other kind of knots, but I like the loop knot because it it will tie down on itself. If you can see that, and it will give a lot of room to play. So when I'm popping that cork, it's gonna give that a lot of room to play. So I typically put like around maybe a foot to two feet. Sometimes I might go two and a half. Sometimes I might even go three. It just really depends on your water depth where you're fishing. But if I am fishing in a lot of the marshy areas and I'll, I'll typically go around about 18 inches to about two feet and i like putting a bead on mine i like putting a bead on my line it's going to help it fall a little faster and it's also going to add that little color that little flare and again i will put a loop knot and i like to use these quick change swivels if you can see that right there that is a that's a norton i like to use size 10 Seems to work great. Yeah, size 10. Quick twist, what it's called. Quick twist, Norton, size 10 is what I go with. I always like to use those. They're a lot better than some of the other, they're a lot better than the other, some of the other quick quick changes, quick whatever you call them. But yeah, I put, I'll even put a, even put a loop knot on that as well. Try to make my loop a little small so this doesn't come back and grab it, but. I like to put these on. I know a lot of people just want to tie a straight line. And you know, that's more power to you. Me, I like to change, because I change my lures out a lot. Okay, so what is the best bait when you are fishing with a cork? Me, I'm a, I'm a shrimp guy. I like to put shrimp on them. You know, typically I try to match the hatch, but you know, anything and everything is gonna hit a shrimp. I will put a shrimp on my corks. Typically I like to use Voodoo, Voodoo shrimp. I picked up this great looking shrimp from Texas Rattler so let me give that a shot on some of these corks I also picked up some of these these other shrimps at the fishing show these are really cool shrimps I like this one because you can tie from the head or from the back so this shrimp will will swim back when you pop it but you can use you can put your DSLs on them you can throw your 3JD lures AM lures chicken boy lures you could pretty much put whatever lure you want right just whatever you want i've 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 had success even putting a spoon on a cork before there isn't any wrong way or right way to fish people are going to pawn off their beliefs and the way they've been doing it like it this is the only way to do it but honestly there really isn't a right or wrong way i'm just trying to help you and give you some ideas tell you what i've been doing and what helps me in my experience and what i like to fish with and what i like to throw now before we go i do want to talk to you about how you work the cork right this is one of the questions that i recently got asked is how do you fish the how do you fish the cork how do you how do you how do you pop it now what i do is after i cast i give it a second let it write itself let the cork write itself and then I will quickly jerk hard and fast. Boom, pop it. Now the sound that you wanna hear is like a cork gun. You wanna hear that? Forgive me, but I'm gonna try to imitate the sound of a cork gun. But you wanna hear that cork, you wanna hear that cork gun sound, that cork shooting out. You wanna hear that. And you want just to pop it straight up, pop it. And then let it write itself, pop it. Now I get asked too, how often do you pop it? Do you pop your cork like bam, bam? Do you do you pop your cork bam? Do you wait seven seconds? You know, it's all, it, everything depends on the fish. I have, I've had had I've had a cork that has just sat there, and I was popping it every fifteen, every ten to fifteen seconds, and popping it and popping it, and I caught a huge big ugly. I've caught plenty of fish where I pop it back and forth, 
pop it. Wait about four seconds. Wait about four seconds. And I've had, I mean, it's really just based on what the fish are going to hit. There isn't, there isn't an exact science to it, right? Because there's no exact science to fish and what they're biting, what they're not biting. I mean, they might be biting in two minutes and they might not be biting again. So when it comes to fish in the court, that's, that's how you do it. You just, you throw it out there. You, you let it sit for a second, let it right itself. Give it that nice quick jerk straight up. You want to try to jerk it straight up. And get that nice cork, that nice sound. Now, if you're not hearing that sound, one of the problems might be your rod. It might not be the cork or what you're doing, but it might be your rod. I found this out the hard way. Now, it makes sense because when you are popping your cork, you want to give it as much resistance as you can. So, you want it as a stiff a rod as, as you can stand to fish with. Doesn't mean that you have to go with the heavy, doesn't mean you have to fish with, you know, a rod that's really, really, really heavy, but you you want to fish with as stiff as rod as you're comfortable fishing with me. I like to go with, I like to go with about a medium. So medium fast is, it, it has too much play in the tip. So for me, it, it doesn't, it doesn't work as good as I'm not as effective as I am when I'm fishing just like a straight flat medium. It's a real stiff rod. That's going to give you that real good cork and that that real good pop and that real good cork gun sound that the fish seem to react better to. Now, now if it's if it's a calmer day and you're scaring the fish, then by all means don't don't pop it that hard. You don't have to pop it that hard. Really, the fish and the bite is going to dictate what you're putting on it. It's going to dictate. The length of your your line it will dictate how you fish it, how you pop it. So the fish bites really gonna do that. And if you're not having success fishing a certain way, then please change it up. I've had been out there in the water before where I have, when I'm using a two foot leader line, and I've cut it in half, and I've used like maybe about ten inches of leader line, and then I started getting the bite. I've had days where I've had to change up. And I was throwing, you know, something with the larger beads that's gonna make it a lot of pop. And it was even a it was even a windy day, and I changed it up to you know smaller beads, quieter, quieter pop, quieter uh, disturbance on the water, and the fish started hitting. So, I mean, you know, the, the fish are really determined. But I hope this helps you. You know, I, I hope this helps you when you are looking when you are fishing with corks. And I hope that you try it if you haven't tried it yet. You know, try putting a cork on. Try putting that voodoo shrimp on. Try buying the Four Horsemen, the Woody, you know, try try fishing with some DSLs, you know. And one of the things that I would recommend always, 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 put some scent on your bait. Scent your bait, especially if you're not getting a bite. If you're not getting a bite, put some scent, scent on it. Sometimes that little, that little scent is going to make all the difference. But, hey, I know I probably talked way too much and rambled on way too much about this. But I just want to thank each and every one of you. Thank you for supporting the channel so far. We are, this has gone further than I've ever imagined it would, but I want to thank each and every one of you guys. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. It really, really helps the channel out. Don't forget to hit thumbs up, like, comment, and share as well. Hopefully next time you catch me hooking up. Thanks.